The latest and greatest robot vacuum from Roborock is the S7 Max V. With its reactive AI object avoidance, increased suction power, and vibrarized mopping technology all built in, it's sure to be an impressive machine. In this video, I'll show you what's in the box and then go through the initial setup of the S7 Max V. And in an upcoming video, I'll show you how it integrates with the brand new Washfill dock, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that upload. Let's check out what's in the box. So first up is the moisture proof map. Now what that's handy for is when your robot goes back to the dock after mapping to recharge, uh, instead of the mop pad potentially sitting on wooden or tile floors or something like that while it's still damp, it'll sit on this instead just to protect your flooring. So that's nice to see that included. Then we've got the mop pad and the mop bracket itself. In here, looks like this will probably be, yep, the user manual, along with quick start guide and safety guidelines and certification. And this tells you how to get set up with it, so we'll get back to that shortly. Power cable, depends on your region as to what cable you get. And then I'll leave that in for a second. Get the dock. Just the charging dock itself. And then the S7 Max V itself. So there it is. I like this nice little carbon fiber look. It's quite, it's quite cool. Uh, so the main differences with this compared to the S7 is this reactive AI obstacle recognition. Now I've got a little sticker over the front here which is in front of the camera which actually says to protect your privacy images captured by reactive AI for obstacle avoidance are processed on board and immediately deleted. Remove this sticker before use otherwise docking will be affected. On the bottom it all looks pretty similar to the S7 uh, it's the same type of brush, that hasn't changed. Uh, the mop mount. Will be the same, the mop vibrates there to vibrate the mop pad. And that will just slide on like so. That feels nice. On the rear, that's where things are a little bit different again. So we've got a little port here. So that's useful for when you've got the ultra dock. And what that allows is the robot to go back to the dock and actually refill the water tank. Let me see on that there. See, it's just a little, it's a little port that allows it to fill up. Overall, I think the water tank is slightly less capacity than the S7, but if you get the Ultra Dock, the capacity doesn't matter because it can go back and refill up when it needs to. It actually sounds like it has a, a float sensor in there or something like that to tell it when it's running out of water. Inside, got the standard dustbin with the filter. So that's it for the unboxing, now let's get it set up in the Roborock app. To save time, I've already downloaded the app and created an account. Once you have done this, tap the plus icon up the top left and then choose the S7 Max V as the vacuum to add. You will then be prompted with your Wi-Fi settings and be aware that you must use a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network as a 5 GHz network is not supported. Input your details here, tap next and then you need to reset the robot Wi-Fi settings. To do this, open the flap on the back and then press and hold the home and spot cleaning buttons until you hear Resetting Wi-Fi And then the Wi-Fi indicator under the flap will flash slowly. In the app, tap to acknowledge the Wi-Fi indicator light is flashing slowly then hit next and what you will see then is a QR code appear on the screen. Hold this QR code in front of the robot's camera and then you will hear the following. Connecting to Wi-Fi 
After that, the app will then say it's connecting the robot to Wi-Fi. It will connect it to the network and then you can tap Use Now. A legal pop-up then appears and then some notes about how to ensure your robot stays safe. I was then prompted with a firmware update and in order to update the firmware the robot must be sitting on the dock charging and also be above 20% battery charge. So now is a good time to find a place for the robot to live in your home. To set up the dock, slide the dock and the moisture proof mat together and you will see the tabs retain it and then place the robot on the dock and it will say Charging. Then once the firmware is updated you can get back to the setup process. Tap next and then you want to ensure that you enable map saving as this unlocks room specific scheduling, naming, customization, multi-level mapping and many other advanced features. You then have to let the app know if your house has multiple stories and if your home has multiple floors the robot can save up to four maps and intelligently identify and switch to the corresponding map when cleaning. You have the option to enable less collision mode which will allow the robot to foresee walls and furniture in advance to reduce frontal collisions but it may cause missed scanning in some narrow spaces. And then finally if you have a home with pets you would definitely want to enable this to help the robot improve obstacle recognition around any mishaps your pet may leave behind. With these options selected it's now time to create a map of your home. To do this tap the button that says quick mapping in the app and then follow the guidelines here. Open the doors for all rooms, clear floors of obstacles to ensure precise mapping, do not pick up or move the robot during mapping, and when using quick map, robots do not perform cleaning tasks and do not avoid carpets to explore more areas. What the robot then does is do some exploration around your house and generates a map using the lidar and camera as it goes. You can see here as I've sped the footage up, the robot explores my apartment to generate the map and uses the camera to identify obstacles. Once the robot explored all the rooms in my apartment, it made its way back to the dock to continue charging. And then the app presented me with this where you can see that the rooms have been automatically generated. Now this was pretty close to what my apartment looked like, but it needed some refining on my behalf. To edit the map, tap this icon here and then choose edit room. In my apartment here, this yellow and blue box is actually my master bed. So I tapped merge down the bottom, then tapped the yellow and blue rooms and then merged those rooms into one. Then again, this yellow and blue room is part of my master bed, it's the walk-in robe, so I chose to merge those rooms as well. I also decided to divide this larger room into my lounge and dining rooms as separate rooms. Once you are happy with the shape of the rooms, you can then tap name and give your rooms a name. Once you've gone through and set the names for your rooms, Tap the check mark and then the back arrow to save your settings. If you wish you can rename the map or if you have multiple floors you can label the map as per what floor it is. Then choose customize and here is where you can select the type of cleaning on a per room basis. So for example if you wish to do a stronger vacuum around the dining room and a lighter vacuum in the bedroom you can do that here. You can also adjust the mop scrubbing intensity on a per room basis as well. The settings here are quite customizable if you wish to take control of that. Otherwise, just tap the smart button and the robot will set the cleaning of each room automatically based on the floor type and the room type. In my case here, it decided to do a quiet vacuum in the master bedroom but then a more powerful vacuum in the dining room where there is expected to be more mess I guess. Then next up, choose sequence and this allows you to set the order in which you want your rooms to be cleaned. I chose the smart cleaning sequence and the numbers on the map here indicate which order the rooms will be cleaned. So for example, the master bedroom will be cleaned first and the bathroom will be cleaned eighth. This is actually quite clever in that it will vacuum all the carpeted areas first before then going on to clean the kitchen and then finally finishing with the bathrooms. If you have specific areas you do not want the robot to go to, you can also set no-go zones and invisible walls on the map to ensure the robot keeps out. After all this initial setup, it's now time to fill up the water tank and set your S7 Max V loose to go and clean your home. Water tank installed. You have the option for a full clean, in which case select full and then tap clean and it will clean every room in the order specified. Or if you want you can clean only specific rooms by tapping rooms and then select the rooms you want to clean. You can also choose times 1, 2 or 3 to do multiple passes over those rooms. 
Or if you want, you can do a zone clean where you draw squares on the map for the robot to clean just a specific zone rather than on a room by room basis. A new feature with the S7 Max V is cleaning routines. There are two cleaning routines prompted to be set up initially. The first one is a full clean in which you can set a scheduled start time and also a frequency. And the other is an after meals clean. You can choose to do a scheduled start on this after your meals and you need to select your kitchen and you can also choose how many cleaning cycles of the kitchen will be performed. And then you need to draw a zone around your dining table. Then anytime this routine is run, it will go and clean the kitchen however many cycles you determined and then clean around your dining table. If you do not wish to schedule these, you can always activate the routines by tapping the icon on the opening page of the app. Once you have sent your S7 Max V out to clean your home and it has returned after the job, you need to ensure the dustbin is empty before the next run. To do this, lift the flap on the back of the robot, remove the dustbin and carefully take the filter out. Empty the contents of the bin and reinstall the filter ensuring not to damage it and then place the bin back in the robot and close the flap. You should now have your S7 Max V set up and ready to use. Ensure you have a look through the app at all the other various settings that may be useful to your specific circumstances. The app is very customizable to ensure the vacuum performs best for your needs. That's it for this video. If you have any specific questions about the S7 Max V, leave them down below and I'll see if I can answer them in the next video. If you did find this one helpful, I'd love if you could give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe as I have plenty more S7 Max V content coming up. Thanks for watching.